Okay, um, so the main goal of peer coaching today is to get everybody confident uh, doing thrusters or some variation of a thruster that's appropriate for them uh, for the main conditioning. Um, so for the thrusters, what I like to do is I like to do a mini peer coaching on a front rack uh, kettlebell squat and then just checking for all the uh, common faults and issues that might pop up. After that, uh, working a little bit on push press, uh, getting people confident with that, and then putting them together and trying to get them to do a fluid uh, explosive squat into a push press, creating a uh, thruster and just kind of talking about the nuances of the movement. So um, always good whenever we're talking about uh, thrusters uh, to ensure that people understand what the rack looks like, the front rack position, making sure they've got their grip. So always taking a second to orient people. Now I really like to, if you can see where my thumb and my fingers meet, this sort of, uh, you know, this kind of L position right here. I like to get the corner of the kettlebell into the corner between my thumb and my fingers. And what that does is it creates a nice space in between the handle and the bell itself where there's this little gap right here. My forearm can kind of fit in it. And that way, it's not like if, if I hold it in the middle, all right, the kettlebell is going to be pressing against my forearm. But if I go ahead and angle it like this, then it's not. So it's worth drawing attention to that. Number two, go ahead and get people comfortable in the front rack position. I like to say thumb on zipper, thumb on collarbone, elbows tucked, making sure the weight of the kettlebell is somewhere between the bicep, the forearm. It sort of has these multiple points of contact right here. So get people comfortable with that first. Just have them check that out with their partner. You can go ahead and elicit the good form on that and then just have people check. Uh, you can always try to sort of disturb them a little bit with as they're doing it, kind of jostle them around, make sure it's uh, solid. Um, and just really avoiding people kind of holding their kettlebells out here. Really want to make sure that it's kind of attached to their core. Once you get that, uh, go ahead and practice. I would recommend working up to a heavy set of five and five on the, uh, on the uh, front rack squat. So just like the goblet squat, except it's off to one side, finding your position. coming down and back up, elicit common faults. So common faults we're looking for, or I should say points of performance, we want our chest up high, our bum down low, seeing if we can get those hips to parallel, get that hip crease to the knees, give or take. Um, ensuring that the knees aren't coming into valgus too much. Uh, main thing we're looking for is control, okay? Sometimes when people generate power, they might pop their knees in for a second and make a sort of whipping motion uh, to generate power. I don't mind that as long as people can get themselves out of valgus and you know they kind of have the requisite stability and strength to do that. Uh, that one and then uh, we've talked a lot about it before, but just talking about butt wing, checking for butt wing, playing around with uh, hip width, um, playing around with different stances, playing around with depth, playing around with your breathing, getting that nice big belly breathing in, anything you can do to kind of reduce that. And again, a little bit of butt wink isn't going to kill somebody, but it's just if you're doing that high rep motion over and over and over again with the pelvis tucking under, it is a risk factor for uh, back pain. So uh, just keep that in mind when you consider um, how deep you want people to go on their squats. So uh, go ahead, work up to heavy set of five and five and peer coaching style squats with um, partners helping each other. Um, after that, go ahead and introduce the push press. I've just been going right into this. You can do strict press, um, but any way people want to, you, you can just do a two handed clean like that. Get up in the, this position, make sure people still have a nice front rack. Okay, get them to sort of bend their knees a little bit. Think about exploding. I like to practice uh, a no arm leg only drive. So see if they can get them just to float the kettlebell using their lower body only, and then just cue that big punch at the top with nice uh, stacked joints in the overhead position. Once you do that, give people opportunity to go back and forth, kind of get a sense of what feels like a challenging weight for them. This will be the limiting factor, the overhead position. So whatever they find challenging here will probably be appropriate for the thruster, probably just a little bit lighter than what they were doing for the squats. But then again, maybe not, you never know. Um, after that, work on the thrusters. So you just put it all together. You get people comfortable cleaning it up. Remind them that a thruster, you always keep it up in this position. You're not cleaning every time. From here, you explode up and press overhead. Um, on this one, you kind of want to accelerate out of the hole, but you don't want, don't want to do that final push up until you get to this power pop position right here and then just hit that final position. What I mean is you're not trying to get the kettlebell to explode into an overhead position when you're too low. Most of that power, your levers are gonna be the best when you get to right about here for producing power. You don't wanna to try to produce all that power here 
while your femur is parallel to the ground because you're going to be at uh, disadvantageous uh, leverage. So wait till you get to about here and then do that final push explosion to pop it up overhead.